All right, write this down, McCoy. First term of the year, it's like 6.15. I'm the only one up. Other than you. Scott's so. You're always doing your... No, he ain't. Scott who? Martin. How you figure? I think so. I thought I heard him wrestle. Oh, yeah, there's a light on these bedrooms. He probably didn't sleep. Canterbury's, I, I was talking to McCoy, I said, hey, I'm the only one in the house up, we got a problem. Canterbury's not up? And I seen your light on, so I figured I'd come make sure you... Canterbury's not up? No. You had a rough day yesterday. A real rough day. Yeah, he's... It's stressful. He's still mentally recovering. Yeah. Two breakdowns. And, a, dude, we dropped his truck. <laughs> this Chevrolet dealership looks like a service station out of the 70s. Oh, my God. Little bitty old tiny thing in the middle of Manny. And we just dropped his truck underneath a like a canopy out there right in front of the front door of the Chevrolet dealership. It's the only place we could put it. That guy on TikTok said you gotta mix it. Mix it real good. You gotta mix it. Cayenne pepper. Organic apple cider vinegar. A little local honey from my buddy. Local to Tennessee. I got a little shot glass I did in. I think it's more than that, but Woo! You want one? I'll try one. I'll make you one. I'll try one. You'll like it. It makes you feel good. Not bad. Not good. No, I mean, it's not good. You don't like drinking vinegar. McCoy just did him a cayenne shot. A cayenne? Yeah. Vinegar and cayenne and honey. What'd you do that for? I do it every day. Canterbury did it. I've already done man. It's like, bring, so you, you it's should, like bringing me back to that chip. <laughs> you just succumbed to the peer pressure, huh? Well, he said it was good for you. It is yeah, good for it's you. It's probably good for you. Yeah. It tastes like crap. It tastes, yeah, it's it's great, great for you. I'm going to throw up. No, you're not. I'm going to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Hey, let me. Let he's, me like let me whip it, up, he's like. Let me whip up some. It's like that, try it later on too. Hey, it's like that pepper shot. I made a pepper chip for him. I, no, it's exactly what I feel like. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just, you just took out. You just took out McCoy. I didn't do it. He asked for one. Oh I'm my never gosh. Never doing that again. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm actually gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's a strip. I just gotta get naked. Oh my gosh! Oh. Oh, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Is that a joke? That was a trick. Not oh. first trick of the year. How much cayenne did you put in that thing? A little bit extra. You put a little extra. <laughs> hey, Matt, you want to try some cayenne pepper and some honey and some yeah, something know. else? He's, he's going to throw up. My first time. Hey, hey how, you been here before? No. You been here before? He just came to ride around pre practice. Like, I look at a map and I look down there at housing, for example, from yep. here. On the map, it looks like it's far because the, the lake's so big. Is yeah, it really far? Point. Okay. I so, mean, is this minutes. mine? Oh, that's fine. It's mine. Oh, okay. That's no big deal. 10 minutes or so. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at the map and I'm, I, I don't know my map. right here? Yeah. Oh. He do not know. He said 10 minutes would be like an hour. I mean, to me, it looks like it's <laughs> to me, it looks like it's 25 miles or something. I, I, I it, well, you got to run a certain way. You know, there's lanes everywhere. But I'm gonna go Can in. you run anywhere you want? You do. So you know what it is now? Did you look today? Uh, yeah, five or four? No, it, it's like two inches, three inches from full. Yeah, it was yesterday. No, it's higher than yesterday. It's come up. It's come up like uh, really? it was 171, 50 something, 60 something, and now it's 80 something. 171, 80 something. So 172 is full. It's almost full. 
It's come up it every day been, for the past it five minutes. Not at all. No. Lately. A month ago, it was three and a half feet lower than that. Three and a half feet. Lower. When I was here, it was yeah. It, it was, was at least four foot low. I was gonna say it was at least three and a half foot lower. Dude, dude, you'd never imagine there's more trees here than anywhere I've ever been in my life. And now they're all covered up. More than like Spring Creek when it was full. Oh yeah, yeah no yeah. Spring Creek. They're like just everywhere. Like the whole thing from shore to shore. It's. I wish I wouldn't have came because I'll be scared to death to get outside of the boat line. Bass ninja. I had a, I had a, it's a cold bass ninja. Dude. Seriously. Oh, that thing's broken right there. Look at that. That's no good. I got a hole in my glove. You gotta take them. I mean, I gotta take that back. I can't have a hole. Yeah. That could be painful. I'll be right back. I think, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Swap them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is bass country. Right here. Bass country right here. I mean, we just went to the gas station. The gas station is beautiful tackle shop. There's just boats everywhere. This is bass. It's like Wrigley Field of bass fishing right here. To me, this is like, this would be a cool place to win. I know my dad has had some good success back in the 70s here so it'd be cool I've never fished a tournament here but man it's just got a it's just got a, an awesome feel to it this is this is again this is like the regular field of bass fishing right here that we're trying to launch our boat in we've got three days to figure it out I've got everything in order that I need I've got my boat rigged out right got my maps downloaded you know it's just it's just a matter of time uh, of, of just searching we're going to be offshore a lot. We're going to be using the scope a little bit. We're going to be up in the grass a little bit, throwing some traps and chatterbaits. we just got to figure out what's going to be the best approach. So, you know, that's what practice is about. You know, at Okeechobee, I had my mind made up. I kind of knew what I was going to do, obviously. Here, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly. I have some ideas of what I think we should be doing, but we won't know till we get out there. It's just going to take three solid days of practice to put together something that hopefully is pretty special. So... Let's, uh, let's, let's go see what happens, guys. not a real big one it's kind of a small creek my theory is that when you're trying to figure out what the pattern is I don't know whether the fish are out here I don't know if the fish are back there I don't know if the fish are halfway three whatever you go on a gigantic creek that's 10 miles long it's hard to figure out it doesn't tell the story correctly you go on a small to medium sized creek this creek's only half three quarters of a mile that way if I find the fish out here or halfway back or all the way in the back then most likely I do that again some other creek all of a sudden now I've decided that that's where the majority of the fish are this far back then I can go to a big creek it takes a lot longer to fish and I can go right to where I think they are and focus my efforts there let's do the idle around in here see if we can find some bait water looks pretty good I guess and yeah so i don't know i don't know what to expect so we'll just get in here in a minute we'll troll motor around real fast see what we see and then move on
Canterbury finally caught one, he said. Yeah, he was in here. He was at the mountain. Oh, okay. I, swear, I, mean, I just told him, I said, where I'm at, it's a lot of bait. He said, you ain't seen no bait yet. There ain't no bait in there. I said, dude, there's a lot of bait right here. You caught any in here? I've seen a few in here, but I guess they're bass. Gotta get a little bit figured out here. Got one coming at it. Got him. Got one, man. I got one. I got one. I had one. All right, I've, I've figured it out now. He was up high. He was up about 15 foot. Oh, Matty just came in this creek. And uh, just so happened, Matt's over there. He's caught a few. But that was my first bite. And what I did, I was throwing the underspin at him. I don't know, I just couldn't get to him good quick enough I went to a heavier head so three eighths and it got down to him quick and I held it on him and then he, he started slowly coming to it and he bit it so I don't know why I missed him but that's a two something that's Got him. Got him. Yep. Oh, stripe. Well, if you know. Hard to tell. I mean, I, how do you tell? But it's good practice. Good practice. I guess people eat them. They say, see how the marks, so look, look, it's even. See how the marks? And then right here, they're broken. See how they're all broken right there? They're like that on, on every fish. And it has something to do with, like, the species of it or something. I don't know. All right. Not what we're after, but gives us a little bit of confidence on how to catch one. We just need to keep looking around, though. Got one. Acting like a bass. Yeah. Down three, three feet of water. Big school of them down there, actually. I wasn't sure what they were. And that's the deal with these things guys it's like that's why that's exactly why I have all these rods rigged up because this was a 3 8 not a real big one this was a 3 8 that's an eighth that's a quarter and I'm gonna rig up a 5 16 and that's because different places and different depths if I see fish in 30 I need to throw a little heavier to get down to them etc so that's the whole reason we've got all the rods on the deck of the boat but there's quite a few of them there, so let's see if we can see if we can find some more. Today, today, today was not a good day. Today, I today's the first day I've been fishing. I caught a big fish. It's not a joke. But you know what? We we learned something today, and that's a way. To, I mean, look, I don't know if you can win it doing what we did, but but I know for sure you can come in the top five doing it. There'll be people. I mean, that's the way to do it. I just, man, I don't know if it was the, maybe this cold weather had them a little, I don't know. But other people caught them, like Matt caught them, and 
Then it's, but listen to this. This is my story. Matt calls me, and I, he's, I don't have any earbuds or nothing. So I get my phone out, and he's talking, and I, I throw a rattle trap out there, and I said, I ain't had a bite, and one loads up. I, said, I got one right now, and I'm fighting, and it's pulling pretty good, and I said, dang. I bite my phone, and it's holding it, and I get it to the boat, and when I boat flip it, it falls out of my mouth, hits by my foot, bounces, bounces twice, hits the water right here. I dive down and try to grab it, and it's my, I'm using a TI titanium rod. It hits the deck first. My knee lands on it, breaks it in half, and I miss the phone. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you catch a fish? Yeah. Two pounders? Two and, two and three quarter, two and a half. <laughs> Probably the biggest one I caught today. <laughs> you should have did the frog hop on it. You should have just yeah. frog hopped out of the boat right on top of it. I thought it was like three foot deep. My poles were down. But it was, t it was, oh, it was like seven, so I said to heck with it. You, didn't, you want a hug? No. Try. You don't want that rubbed off on you, I promise you. I think if they bl it blows real hard, like 30, it'll probably cancel day one. If it blows 30, they will, but it ain't gonna blow that bad. How bad is it gonna blow? 20? 15 to 20. I don't think they'll cancel for that. Yeah. How bad is 15 to 20 on this lake? It's pretty bad today, and it was like 10, wasn't it? I didn't think it was bad at all. <laughs> Good gosh. It's bad up that way. Really? Yeah, there was boat taking a beating. You know, everybody knows fishing has really changed a lot here lately. I would love to just go put my trolling motor in down shallow and fish grass and uh there's a lot of you know hydrilla here. So, I mean this is just a fish factory. And and you can do that and catch fish. But can you compete to win a tournament now that, you know, Active Target, Live Scope, all that's come out and gotten such a, such a player. The guys are so good with it. So uh, you really have to divide your time up practice-wise. We've practiced two days already, and uh, I've spent some time shallow. Caught several fish shallow. No, haven't had any quality up shallow yet. I just don't know if they're there. We've had a big cold front. But... Tomorrow I'm going to look out deep, man. I'm going to spend my time out scoping and uh, see if I can't run into a wad of them to hopefully get me through this tournament. Well, I saw fish today that I know were big bass and didn't catch them. So, it, you know, it's just one of those things where you've got to like show them the right little deal. You got to make really good casts. I think my transducer's pointed exactly right, I think. It looks like it is, so I think tomorrow I'll be a little better. There we got a few extra little tricks. So maybe a hair jig, drop shot. I don't really know. I know where they are for the most part, but I just have to find. You know, it, here's what it is. You just got to find the right couple creeks that have a lot of fish in them. And that's just the way it is. There's some magical creeks out there that are loaded. And those magical creeks that are loaded that have fish biting, you can win the tournament. And if you're in a creek that's not loaded, you're not going to catch them. It's that simple. I really need to cover a lot of water tomorrow. I need to, I need to troll them around faster. And I need to... Um, Try to find something special tomorrow. And get in a groove, like a little groove. A little groove is figuring out the exact little wiggle on that little minnow bait. You know, do you, the right angle of the drop. You gotta lead them just a little bit because some of them are 20 feet down. So when they're 20 feet down, you gotta, it's almost like a, it's kind of like a quarterback. Okay, this is what, the best way to describe it. It's kind of like a quarterback when he's on Man, he can make that pass and connect with that receiver every time. And when you're off just a little bit, you throw over or behind them or whatever. And that a lot of that was today for me. Yeah. It was supposed to get to 29, but it didn't, I don't think. 29? It's what it was supposed to be this morning. I it looks like it... you're in an interrogation room sitting there with those lights above you. You got something you want to ask me? I might. I got to get, you know, I think my problem was yesterday. 
my my aim my aim was not good my distance was off yesterday like I, I would throw what I thought was 40 feet and it would be like 50 feet 60 70 feet on my on my thing it was like crazy you gotta be practicing that in the off I, season well, I know is that what you do you sit out in the yard Mac shows up, up dialed in every every year he shows up dialed like never been here in his life he didn't get out there at 11, and 11.22, he had a limit yesterday. <laughs> 22 minutes. I mean, that day, yeah. It was 11.37. It was not 22 it's impressive. minutes. It was it's so impressive to me. It wasn't 22 minutes. It wasn't much more now. He caught five in the creek. I only caught one in. It was like He's an five times better than me. I caught, I think he two or, two or three in there. Caught three in there. That's a routine now. Ugh. Little cayenne pepper. They eat. Oh, they eat. They're like little uh, sausage garlic cloves. They're a little different than. Oh, uh, yeah. That's cool. I wash my hands. We're good. Sandy, you need a booger finger in there. I'll look at it. Put a little twist on top. When it's going like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, they You know, people always wonder how we find fish. It's like. I mean, it's a little bit like a roulette wheel. We just spin the wheel. You just go fish hard all day. I know. All right. I'm you going, going fishing hard all day? All day. All day long. Like up in the middle of that channel. That bottom part right there. So this is open water. So, the, so this is all underwater, like six, eight feet. So this is just lake. But you got these little veins that run up in here. It's a big old lake, though, ain't it? It's crazy, man. This lake, to me, it's got an awesome feel to it. Like I feel like I'm at Wrigley Field. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, the, like you go to the gas station here, and everybody bass fishes. Right. Like you just nothing but boats everywhere. Gas stations get. That's all it is. Shop. Fishing town. Fishing. What you get when you don't start in Florida? Jig and spoon out here in the channel can be good a lot of times if there's a lot of bait. So what's the deal is what's happening? It's water temperature is 53, 52 something on my graph, but I think the garments are a little light, so it's 54 roughly, about a degree warmer than it was yesterday. This bait is sucked to the bottom pretty tight, and that that when that happens, a lot of times the fish just sit literally underneath the bait. And they get real inactive because they got food right there in front of them the whole time. As the water warms up, this bait will start getting high in the water. The bass have to kind of chase them around a little bit more. They're burning a lot more energy. When that happens, they feed a little better. But right now, they are being stingy. It's hard to tell which, which are bass and which are drum. See, like there's one right there. There's something underneath that bait. Sometimes the reason a chicken spoon works so good is because it just makes them bite. They don't want to feed, but it's falling in their face, literally. Good one too. Look at that. Yes, sir. That felt good. That. That's how they're supposed to act. It's a decent little fish right there. Thank you, buddy. Right at three pounds. Not bad. All right. Thanks, buddy. 
That was cool. See you, dude. The bait pop made a difference. He came up behind that. Bit it. So here's the deal, guys. You've heard me talk about it a bunch, obviously. It's what you call no joke. It's a silver bait pop. It allows my bait to show up better on sonar. But most importantly, most importantly, because my sonar is good. I don't necessarily need bait pop all the time. Sometimes I do for sonar, but not all the time. But I always need scent. I've seen it too many times now. You know, like here's the deal. Like when you're doing scent, <laughs> traditionally, if you didn't have anything to compare it to, like if you just were just fishing, right? How many times does a fish come up to your bait and turn away? You don't know because you can't see it. I can see what happens. So like the other day I was in Alabama throwing uh, weightless wacky worms on these suspended fish. They'd come up to it, swim away. I put bait pop on there, they'd swim up to it, bite it. It's the same thing here. It's gonna improve your catch ratio, 100%. Adds a little color, adds a little, just, just, just a lot of little stimulations in that right there. So anyways, bait pop. We obviously have a little link in the description. Check it out, if you fish in farm ponds, you fish in lakes, you use sonar, you don't use sonar, just use it for uh, the fish formula that's inside of that. So, good stuff. Didn't hit him. I didn't hit him. I gotta hit that spot. That's the spot, not the other stuff. It's a big one, dude. That's a big one. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. I'm getting dialed in. It's going to take a little bit of time. I knew it would get kind of acclimated to get lined up on these on these fish. That's a that's a good one there. That's a good one there. All right. Body around. Thank you, buddy. Beautiful, beautiful bass right there. Toledo Bend. All right. That was awesome. Thank you, buddy. Bait pops a deal, bro. I'm serious. I'm serious. I can see why. I can see it making a difference. It's not like I wonder if it's making. I can watch it make a difference. Oh my god, it's a big one. Yeah, I might be fishing here. Got him, got him, got a big one, dude. So you at him? Watch this. Oh gosh, he's yeah, he's five pounder. Oh my gosh, six pounder. Ah, uh, five, five pounder. It's big, bro. Holy jeez. There ain't a butt around either. Wow, that's a big one. This is my creek. You go find you another flat creek, and we, we, we can share it. We can. We'll have two to mess with. Dude, this. Yeah, it's a. It's a. It's hitting a five. It's hitting a six. It's a. It's a. It's what four and a half probably. Big one. It's another big one right there. Another big one right there. 
Nice fish. Nice fish. It's interesting about that one. I made 10 casts of that fish. 10 casts. And when I finally got it in the right position, he bit. So so when you throw at these fish, a lot of times you think, okay, well, that's just not a bass. It looks like a bass, but it's not reacting. It's because it hasn't seen it yet. It's amazing. church right here we've got um, Joey and Cody Huff and Clifford Perch is coming and uh, we do a little a thing called meet the pros it's kind of a cool thing we, we used to do a lot on the FLW tour and we'll, we'll go to a local church in the air when we have these tournaments and they'll usually the church will provide you know like a fish fry or something and then we'll get up and talk some fishing tips and uh, you know kind of tie it all together with a little message and and it's a good time it's a good little fellowship here in the community so that's we try to give back. We try to do things like this when we when we can, and uh, this is one of them. So come on and go check it out. Man, you need a rod, man. You, you want it on the back? Or you want it right here? Oh, right here. Right here. Okay, got you. If anybody got a question, you're gonna raise your hand. Ready, set, go. If you don't raise your hand and ask a question, we're gonna just move right along here, sir. So. Get colors, black, and black, just basic colors. Any color will work as long as it's black and blue. <laughs> what, has the, what has been the biggest fish that y'all has that y'all have caught? Okay. The biggest fish is a 1,000 pound bluefin tuna. <laughs> it's 10 foot long too. When God's time is perfect. You know, we talk about timing. We talk about how perfect God is. And, Talk about provisions and talk about the blessings and what Jesus did for us. And, and so when I got saved, I said it was a process. For me, in 1999, I fished as a co angler, decided to fish as a co in 2000. That first tournament was in Okeechobee, the second tournament was in Pasco, Mississippi. And I had some friends around me at the time. And these, these friends are at Ferguson and a few other people that had recently been saved. They were, they were praying for me. They were always telling me, I'm praying for you, Scott. And I didn't know God. I mean, I, I went to church kind of like we were supposed to, you know, like Christmas and Valentine's Day, Mother's Day and Easter and all those special, you know. I put money in the tip jar or the tithe jar. I made change. Because <laughs> I thought, you know, if you just do nice things and put a little money in there open the door for somebody, you're probably be in good shape, you know. But I was wrong because, you know, when I soon found out that the only way to heaven is believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and giving your life to Him. And so I go to Pasadena, Mississippi, and I meet a guy there. I made a prayer going down I 10 that day on the way there that would God put someone in my life that would help me know you more. I didn't, I didn't know how to pray, so I just prayed what I thought was a pretty good prayer at the time. I meet a guy later that evening. His name was Randy Clark, and I think, you know, you know, Clipper knows Randy. And I meet Randy for the first time. This is going to go over 10 minutes, by the way. <laughs> I say, how are you doing? So we're, we're talking and stuff. And he was going to jump in the boat with me for a few days because that Pasco, Mississippi, and that whole delta, this is before we had maps and GPSs and all this crazy stuff we have now. He knew all the backwater areas and had he really wasn't a tournament fisherman. He just knew, he just loved the fun fish. So I asked him, I said, What do you what do you do? You know? And he said, Well, I'm a preacher. I'm like, wow, okay. That's interesting. So we hang out for a couple of days. I end up miraculously winning the tournament. My first tournament I ever won. And I know Randy was a big part of that. And I, I asked him, I said, dude, you know, if you ever want to fish as a co-angler on any of these other tournaments this year, it's on me. You can come hang out anytime. So he did. He came and hung out with me. 
And he told me about the Lord a lot. He got sat in the back of my boat and told a story out of the Bible. And he was a great storyteller. But I was kind of hard-headed. I was kind of the I was kind of the guy that wanted was a little bit in my head. I was I was kind of on both sides of the fence. You know, one day I was trying to live for the Lord, and the next day I was on the wrong side of that fence. And uh, a whole year goes by. Me and Randy are hanging out. We're fishing in this lake. And all of a sudden, I felt that he was telling a story about something. I don't have any idea what it was about. It was in the Bible. And I had this presence come over me. And I had chills. And I, and I, I, I could feel like I could hear something. But it wasn't audible. But I could feel like it was the Lord speaking to me, saying, Right now is a good time to just sacrifice your life. And just turn and give your life to me. Right now. Turn around the boat and, and get saved. Right here. Right now. It'll be a great time. Randy's in the back. He's looking off the cast and talking. And I'm on the front of my boat, running the troll motor, and I'm just standing there. And it, it's, I can feel it. And it's all through my body. I've got tears running down my face. And uh, I'm fighting. It's weird. I'm, so I'm scared. I didn't know what to do. You know, I, 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 I just... I kind of started thinking, kind of thinking about it a little bit. And I started kind of telling God to get back with me later. I'm not, I don't really want to do this right now. And sure enough, it started kind of going away. Feeling went away. And I stood on the front of that boat, and it was the most empty feeling I've ever had in my life. Like, I literally just told God no. And told him, told him to get back with me later some other time. And I felt empty. Like, I was scared. I was like, that probably wasn't a good idea. And I went a whole other month and a half with this empty feeling inside. And I didn't know if God was ever going to touch me on the shoulder again or not, you know. So I think, what if I get in a car accident or something? It's going to be bad. Like, this is bad. <coughs> I'm going to stand in front of him. He's going he's to tell me something. Really, like, beat it, <laughs> you know. And Randy was in Clueston. And I said, I said, you know what? I, I need to go get saved. Made my mind up. I told Randy, I said, Come outside by my boat. And I went and I leaned up against my boat. The same boat that I stood on that about a month before that, you know. Oh, God, to get back with me later. And I said, Hey, Randy, I said, I want to get saved right now. And he said, Really? I said, Yeah, I want to pray that prayer. I didn't feel anything special. It wasn't, I didn't have goosebumps. I didn't have tears running down my face at that time. I didn't have some miraculous God touching me on the shoulder telling me it's time. I was alone. And, uh, and I prayed that prayer. And he changed my life. Changed my life forever. The reason I'm, I'm so encouraged to tell that story is that I know there's people in this crowd probably sitting there right now going, I'm waiting for some special thing to happen before I give my life to the Lord. That's kind of what I thought. The Lord came and touched me on the shoulder and I told him to get back with him later. And then when I finally decided in my heart that that's what I needed to do, he did, I didn't feel some special thing. It wasn't some special moment. I just prayed that prayer, a simple prayer, and I believed it in my heart, and it worked. He's done. I'm saved. Changed my life. Made me a better husband, made me a better father, made me a better friend. And uh, he can do the same for you. So if you are if you were like me, and you're waiting around for some special moment to happen in your life before you say, I want to surrender my life to the Lord, you don't have to. You can do it right now, right here today. Because if you get in a car accident on the way home, something bad happens to you, so you just never know where life's going to take you. But it, it was just, it was neat for me to see that and to be able to kind of put that in the story to tell you all because it's good encouragement and uh, hopefully it changes somebody's life in here. So thank you. Thank you all. What is R&R? &R? Okay, so it's in Red River High School, the high school I go to. Is that in Shreveport? It's in Cachada. Okay, yeah. So it'd be south. Like, what pool is it? What pool is it? Four? Four. 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 Yeah. And actually, whenever I went, I used to go there. Yeah. And then I went to a different school and came back. And they didn't have the fishing team. And actually, my mom teaches there. And so you started we were, a fishing team. We were able to start the fishing nice. team. And I saw, found on Facebook that you were doing this. So. Cool, man. Oh, well, there you go. Give me some credit, the Red River Bassmasters. Yes, sir. I fished a bunch of tournaments over the years. It's been a little tough on me. That place has been. Yes, it's, it's gotten bad. Yeah. It's gotten yeah. So it's hard to get around.
just get an idol everywhere. Kind of like here, the worst. I think that's worse. We have a tournament, and not this week, but next week here, a really? high school tournament. Nice. Back them up, man. I got faith Thank in you. you. Thank you Thank for the you. hat. You're welcome. Red River Bassmasters. All right. Well, let's see. What are we going to do tomorrow? I got to check the weather. I need to um, just find some more places. I really don't know exactly where we're going to find them, but we just got to find we got to find some more fish. We got to get a few more little zones on that side of the lake, and I think we can do it. I know what I'm looking for. I feel like I can catch them okay in certain places. You know, still having a hard time catching those fish out way out deep. Uh, maybe they're not bass, but, you know, we had a great day today. Caught a lot of, caught a lot of nice ones, and boy, I really hope that wind doesn't blow as hard as they're saying it's going to blow on the first day of the tournament, but, you know, if it does, it does. Like I said, tomorrow we just need to find some more stuff on this side of the lake that kind of protects us from that wind and uh I need, I need to try a few more little bait options tomorrow as well around some of these fish but you know all in all pretty good hope you guys are enjoying the video it was pretty fun catching those fish today those were some nice ones i mean that was that was cool when you get on them things start popping those fish get active and you find a good but again it's all about a good zone it's all about a good area Same thing on every morning. I know. Have you? Uh-huh. <laughs> then when we're away from our wives and stuff. All I do is turn my socks inside we out. Dirty. We, <laughs> we dirty. I do that to my underwear. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you know what I have learned, though? At the honest with you, I always bring too many clothes for years. Like, Not for two weeks. Well, this time I, that's how it makes it. I'm three weeks, so I got to go to. Uh, and you have too many clothes? Well, you have five bags. Well, typically back. I bring a whole suitcase and I never even get to the bottom of it because we'll do laundry a few times. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like I have long underwear under these and then I have a rain gear on, so these don't ever really get dirty. For yeah. You, know, you, you have long underwear on under those today? Yes. It's supposed to be 75. Well, I'll take them off at some point. Okay. <laughs> You're going to take your pants and your long underwear right. off? That's right. Hey, you been wearing long underwear? Yes. I'd burn up. I would too. I got these. What? I got these dang fleece. Man, lines. I have it. Man, I have my mask on all day long. Poor Canterbury man. Who are you gonna lose today? He's. <laughs> and not my phone because it don't work still. <laughs> well, don't it doesn't work though. Mm -mm. This is our final day. And so far, it's been weird. Like we had a really nasty cold spell hit us. Like right when we got here. So, and it was like in the 70s, I think, all last week. I think it's kind of knocked these fish back a little bit. So, I've caught a few good ones, but not what I need to do really good in this tournament. So, today, I'm going to go further down. I haven't been all the way to the dam yet, and I'm going to explore kind of the lower end, some of those major creek arms down there. And I'm going to actually, this afternoon, when it starts to warm up quite a bit, I'm going to look for a shallow bite right there towards the end of the practice, something that might materialize during the tournament. Um, as of right now, I've just been fishing off the bank doing the old FFS thing like everybody else. So I would like to not fish like that, but if it's, uh, it's the way I gotta fish, the way I feel I gotta do to compete, then I'm going to. So we'll see. You know, I've spent two days out here so far and I, and I feel pretty good about what I found. The first day was not good, but that's just part of the process. Yesterday I learned a lot. Um, I learned how to get this fish to bite a little bit better. Caught some good ones, obviously. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on offshore stuff this week. And that's just, you know, there's a lot of options. But I know there'll be enough fish offshore still to do to do pretty well in this tournament or win. Some guys are going to catch them up shallow. But, man, with not knowing anything about this lake, even where the grass is, it's just one day of practice. I need to just go all in. I need to find something that's a little out of the wind. I've been checking bass forecast. The, uh, you can look at the different weather settings. You can look at all these different things here that it gives you, which is really cool. See the wind right here? Hardly any today. Three miles an hour out of the south. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Then the wind all of a sudden starts picking up. Eight miles an hour. See how everything's really increasing? You can go to Wednesday. Ten miles an hour out of the south, south, south. 
it's not showing it as bad. Here we go. See, this is this is where it gets a little dicey right here. 22 miles an hour on Thursday, which is the first day of our tournament, southwest. 72 degree temperature. So we have to find something today that's going to protect us from 22 miles an hour out of the southwest. That's what you have to do. As a tournament fisherman, you have to be a good weatherman. You have to have good apps. You have to utilize those apps the best you can. And uh, Bass Forecast is a great little tool. So it's good for you to sing out and see what uh, see what we can put together today. And uh, it's been a, it's been a good week. I like this lake a lot. It's it feels good out here. Let's go. Warming up a lot. The first day of practice, it was really, really cold all day. The biggest tip I can give anybody right now on fishing offshore is, is accurate casts when it comes to seeing those fish on the graph. That's what it boiled down to me the first day. Not, not, not getting close enough to them. These fish is line of sight's not very big when you compare it to some other places. Go, bro. Look at that. Look at that. buddy. It was awesome. Bite this at least. Thank you lord. Just trying to get a reaction and that one shot down to the bottom and then another one came and got it. I love this thing. This is so freaking cool dude. Beat down outdoors. So I've got Different from the first tournament. Now I have two 12s here side by side fixed. Perfect, out of the way of the foot pedal. And then of course, I've added the pole for this vent. And the great thing is you can just leave the pole, you can leave it all the way down like I have this morning and you can still read your graph just fine. And then when you need to and you're just getting tired of looking down, you just bring it up a little bit. And this pole, you can take that out and replace it with a little top like I did at Okeechobee. I didn't run the tall system at Okeechobee. 
so it, it I'm just really impressed I mean honestly there's a lot of companies that make great graft mounts but all graft mounts are basically the same they just hold your graft in a fixed position this you have full control and my back here has full control so full adjustability that's a big deal Everybody's expecting me to kick butt. I feel, I don't know. I, I don't want to just, I got to I gotta be honest with myself. I'm not just sure how I feel about this one. But all we can do is be calculated. I've got enough stuff over here that I can get bit. Catch a couple big ones. All good. If I can get over there, I've got three or four places on the other side that has a little bit better grade of fish for me. And if I can get on that, then we can really do good. It is uh, a beautiful lake. Water's up a little bit. Temperatures are starting to rise quite a bit, so things are going to change. But a lot of times when it changes real fast like that, things don't necessarily the fish don't necessarily change with it. So I'm, I'm hoping there'll still be enough out of here cruising around bait doing their thing that I can catch uh, you know it'd be nice to catch 20 pounds a day it's not going to win I think it's going to take 90 I think it'll take 90 somebody will hem them up 25 to 30 pounds a day where'd you go today? Stayed on this Texas side. I should have had more though. I think I got. I think I might have found them. Where? Oh, good. Oh, good. oh that chicken stuff. Yeah. Dude, I was leaving up, leaving Brady Mountain. You know, you gotta go out that yeah. dang long windy road. A freaking black cat about that big ran across the road in front of me. <laughs> and dude, it's been downhill ever yeah, since. Did the cat really grow across? Yeah, a black cat. It? Yeah. I don't even know if it's a house cat or a panther, dude. It might have been a panther, <laughs> bad luck as it is. <laughs> what are we cooking? Cooking a little chicken, a little chicken deal that I got. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's good. You want the biggest All right, thing dinner is ready. Pretty, make pretty good size, let me say. Oh, yeah. I can read that. That's real good. Here. Listen, Thursday morning, 9 a.m., south southwest, 21 to 32 miles an hour. That's on Aki weather. No way we'll fish. Mm -hmm. Really? No way. I mean, blowing straight at the ramp, dude. The, you know how messed up that'll be? The yeah. problem is, is you can't just take off and run in the direction you want. You got to run in those boat lanes. Yeah. Yeah. That. that it, I told Emily, I said, that, that makes the boat lanes make this place the worst of anywhere we go because right. of exactly what Scott just right. said. You cannot work the waves with your boat. You know, I, you just I, ran, I ran some stuff today that may not need to be ran, but I ran it. I did too. I actually ran out of markers. Dude, I was coming out of that big creek. Really? And there's a, chain, there's a lane that goes into the, the big lane at the yeah. lake. And I'm following that lane and I see one branch off to the right. And it's like parallel in the back. Yeah. yeah. So I go right. I'm like, oh, cool. I can cut some time off. Yeah. Well, dude, I went about seven markers and they stopped. <laughs> You're like, uh oh. And I'm like, I did that deal. Like, when I came up here pre fished, I, I did that. Well, I was looking up ahead and there's a dock that stuck way out or some kind of like construction yeah. deal. And there's something on the end of it. And I'm like, 
that can't be one. Of, that can't be the next marker. So I'm running toward it. I'm running toward it. And it's a marker. I, no, it ain't. It's a reflector <laughs> that the people put out there to pull their boat in. And it's like 10 foot off the dock. And I look down, dude. And I look at my GPS and I set the boat down. I was in four foot of water. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, you found a shortcut. You know what I did? <laughs> I sat down and I idled straight out towards the channel. Oh, so, okay. so you know how like you see your your lanes on my Garmin on the map. You've got lanes like they're crisscrossing the lake everywhere. I can hit any point on the lake and say go here. I hit auto guidance and it'll it knows the lanes and the shortest route. Like a navigation. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Like, like a, a car, truck. Just like your car. They can say the shortest route. Run straight at it. <laughs> yeah. They point. Yeah. Touch it and hit go to cursor. But, but it's nice because you can haul butt and you don't have to worry about missing a turn. Yeah. Well, if you raise your jack plate up a little bit and run 70, you'll be all right. Cheese balls. Put it on a hook and catch a cart. Matt was hungry. You're out. You're out. Is that what you catch cart with it? Now, now, now listen. The carp deal. You can't talk about carp bait recipes. Well, I don't need to know everything about it, but it, isn't it like... Huh, what do you mean nothing? Isn't it like peanut butter and like oats? Oh, dude. I mean, yeah, you can use oats. I use a. Uh, I used to use sun drop in my oats. Sun drop. Yeah. I What's that do? Might give it a little sweetness. Yeah. Caffeine. Gets we take excited. Our, <laughs> we take our pickups. You know what pickups are? Uh uh. You don't know what pickups are? So no. You ain't a carp fisherman. No, I'm not a carp fisherman. We take our pickups. Pickups. So you got a. You got a weight. You got an egg sinker. You got a three-way swivel. Okay. You got one in here? Yeah, I don't have car. Yeah, I got a bunch of carp rigs in my bass boat. No, I ain't got no carp rigs in my bass boat. This dude just set the record for the all-time weight of Bassmaster Open, and you said you're not no carp fisherman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, bass fish. So you mix it all up. Yeah, the pickups are like like we used to use like corn pops. You just pops. caught one coming around that point. I can't see, man. My eyes. You just threw it back. No, he didn't. Yeah. No, he didn't. He's just going down the bank with a spinner bait. Corn up. Man, I get it. Corn? No, we use corn pops. Oh, so you put that like you, the cereal? You got, yeah. So you got like, or I used to use Reese's puffs, Reese's peanut butter puffs. Yeah, yeah. that's Ooh. the deal. And I put you them eat on, some of them every once in a while too, like, like when maybe, you're making it. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> like putting on the hook. So I used to cook. I used to cook my bait in my mom's kitchen when I was young. She get mad because it stink up the whole kitchen. I'd be in there heating up ketchup in a pot. You make take minute made rice. Yeah. Take a 32 ounce box of Minute Maid rice. Really? You mix that ketchup in there and then you add your flavoring. You can use like a, you can do you use cook like, the rice? Or is it that or is it hard? Huh? You cook it where it's soft or you use it when it's hard, like grain? No, you just dump the rice in there and put the warm ketchup in there and that softens it oh and then it packs. Gosh. Then it packs, then it packs wow. together. But you take them corn pops and you put them on each hook. So you got three way swivel and got two yeah. leaders mm -hmm. with single hooks on. You put a corn pop on each hook, then you pack that bait around them pops and when it bait falls you got to have good bait that breaks when it hits the bottom the bait breaks so it falls ah, into a pile it's like a pile of corn pop and rice and ketchup and it and the carp comes in he starts sucking up all the rice yeah and then and the corn that, pops and right then here and then he gets that pop with that hook in it and then he goes God, and then he you goes, got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like that then you're like uh, it's big money too isn't it yeah dude they, they have tournaments every day I think we're week. gonna do one. We're gonna do an SMC. Yeah, we got. I'll, I'll drive over. Will you there drive over? Yes, sir. Billy's coming. Wait, what? We're, don't we camp out and do Wait, a whole night? All night. Who's coming? Billy. Wait, well, huh? Yeah. Y'all can stay at the house. Billy gotta get a hotel. <laughs> we put him in a <laughs> no, tent. These are just extra if you want to pull mine in the truck or whatever. Yeah. Um, putting our stickers on for the year. This is our badge. means a lot to me right here. All right, so what we're doing today is we go through the process of getting our jersey checked. We get our boats checked for the wrap. Make there's certain requirements we have to have for the wrap. We obviously have to put the proper stickers and logos on the boat. You have to have your name on the boat. So they kind of check all that. So today is kind of a you know, kind of like a, a pit meeting. So we get all of our boats all kind of figured out and that's that's what we're doing. So now we're going to take a photo of the boat. That ended up on their website, which is kind of cool. And uh, the wind's starting to blow. So here she comes. I don't know, that's, that's quite a bit already. It's going to be interesting to see what tomorrow brings.
All right, so we're here. We're here. At, what is this place called? Keith Toledo, Toledo Tackle. Let's go see what they got, boys. Getting us a little tackle. So tackle. we're Matt, Matt, you like the turkey hunt? Yes, sir. Let me hear your, your call. You said you could, you could call one. Gosh, that's good. That's good. That's good, Matt. Matt had well, nothing on that. Matt, seriously, Matt, don't you think she's better than Matt? Yeah, I need a call. No, you don't. That's not what I heard. No. Yeah. Can I, you do it without it? I might, Kim, but I want to listen to you. You got to go first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's got that feminine touch. That's way better. Right, right. Can't get that high. Come out. Undefeated. <laughs> Listen to her parents. I got the daughter here. Yeah, you got it. You got a girl got it going on. Dang. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. That's what she lives for. You never know what you're going to find in a tackle God. shop in Texas. That's all I got. Man, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> It's a weird deal. Like, you know, I don't even know where I'm going to start yet. That's the thing. That's a weird th feeling when you have that sort of practice. But we're going to get after them. I mean, it's going to be good. Fish are going to bite, I think. It's get, been warm for a couple of days now. So I think that's a positive when you're here. It's just like being in Florida. These fish are, I think they're really moving. I thought they started moving up yesterday. So. Shallow fish are going to bite a little bit too. That's going to be good. Hey guys, Christian Yolotech here. Introducing Bolt-On Camera Mount right here, guys. Comes in five flavors. We've got black, gunmetal gray, red, blue, and Yolotech green. Super strong mount for top en tough anglers like Scott Martin here. And this one right here, once you uh, bolt it on, and there's two ways of doing that. You can either screw two holes and bolt it right on or use our adapter plate. But either way, once you have that in, now you have seven different adjustments. You can come 45 degree back, 45 degree forward, 90 forward, 90 back, or 45 left and right. Let's look at the back here. We have two options now. So now we have a forward camera and a backwards shooting one back. Yeah, so what's really cool about having all the different adjustments, guys, is if you want to get multiple shots, you have up to seven cameras available to you. So we've got an adjustment 45 forward here to capture Scott on the front deck. And then one of the toughest shots in fishing is when they're sitting in the seat on the console to bring that fish on over the side. But now we have a vertical mount with a camera straight down on him and he'll never miss that shot. Yeah, because we missed every one of them at Okeechobee. Yeah. <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. All That's right. awesome. Thank you for doing that. No problem, brother. That's pretty cool stuff. And here's the biggest thing. Like we had the articulating arm, which was good. It was pretty good this year. But this is solid. Nothing's moving there. So the only thing we got to worry about is a little ball joint. Just adjust those. We're good to go. And you're set. Check it out at yellowtech.com. <sighs> Blowing pretty good. It's supposed to blow a little bit more in the morning. I mean, I, I don't know. I, they'll probably blast us off. But I don't know. I mean, it all depends. I think the deal here, if they were going to, I would think they would let, let, it would be a lower level of wind versus like if you were like Murray or something, because you can kind of tuck out of stuff. Yeah. Here, you're forced to run the. You can't run the you, direction you need to correct. run. Correct. That's correct. So you're forced to run where you probably don't need to be running in the direction you don't need to be doing it. Right. It's kind of like Santee. It's the same thing. Certain winds at Santee, they got to shut it down because. Correct. You're right. 100%. Um, I'm boat 90. I'm like last boat out tomorrow, which is crazy. <laughs> I think I am 94. How many boats? Maybe there's 100 and something, 100 right? 100 103. 100 some 94. So I have 430, which we do go tomorrow. I'd be good. I mean, I'll get all data. Well, you'll get that the next day, too. Why? If we don't go tomorrow. Right. I mean, it ain't going to matter. I'm just saying, like, the first day of the tournament, you're going to get a long day. Yeah. 
Second day of tournament, you get a short day. Yeah. Like, but you know what you got to catch that day. Yeah. You kind of have an idea, so at least you you know you can focus in on what you got to do. What do you think biggest bag tomorrow? I bet there'll be a 30, 30 pound bag tomorrow, don't you think? I don't know. I bet there will. Doubt it. You doubt it? 20, 28. 28. All right. Pretty well, dang good. We're going to go bed. Appreciate y'all. And I really appreciate all the love on the other videos, guys. Y'all are just killing it, man. Thank you all so much. We are working through the merch stuff. We're doing it ourselves. So... We've got some artists. If there's any really cool artists or any of y'all have any really cool ideas, DM us on Instagram. McCoy, especially, just DM McCoy on Instagram and send us some ideas. Or if you have a little, if you have a cool little artwork thing, something I'll, if it's cool, we'll put it in. It'd be kind of fun. I challenge y'all. Do something cool. So, you know, we're going to have the merch live on the link right now. Uh, we have more stuff coming. And we've got a tour shirt that's dropping that's really cool. So it shows the whole schedule for the year. So jump over there and check it out, guys. And, uh, yeah, the hoodie, which we're about out of hoodie season. But, you know, a lot of people wear hoodies year-round. So, and this is thick. This is a really thick, nice, it's not a little chintzy one. It's a good feeling. It's a great feeling sweatshirt. So, anyways, we gone. Good night. Oh, God. I just had to get that line. Bam!